Hey, it's Monday and a lot changed over the weekend, and uh, I've been trying to position myself on the Plain Spoken podcast as being a voice that people can listen to. I've been trying to um, stay away from certain ways of being so that uh, people left, right, and center can trust that I'm a person whose voice uh, is a good, I'm a good faith actor, that I can talk about what's going on in the United Methodist Church and Methodism more broadly. Um, and uh, I hope I've been that for you so far. If, if this is your first video that you're watching of me, then you should probably watch some other stuff. Uh, enjoy. But if you've been with me for a while, and a lot of you have, um, first off, thank you. I, I appreciate all of the affirmation and support that I've gotten. This has been harder and more demanding than I thought it was going to be, which is the story of my life with everything I pick up. But it's also been really rewarding. I've loved getting to know a lot of people from across the country and across the world. It's been a real joy and honor. And if it stopped today, I, I'd be happy. Um, but I thought if I'm going to continue to put myself in this position, then it's important that I do things like this somewhat regularly so that people who support me, who are praying for me, who are spending time with me, so that you know how to con continue praying for me, but also so that you know how to sift through the things that I'm saying. You know, I, I, I don't think it's realistic to ask people to just trust everything that I'm saying and, and take it however you want. One of the things that people have been curious about with me is, am I staying or am I going with respect to the United Methodist Church? If I'm going to continue talking about it, am I going to be doing so as one who's on the outside or on the inside? And I think I've been honest enough to say that I've been really conflicted about that. My scriptural convictions are that it's not right for me to leave a, a Christian body if it's recognizably a church. Um, and that's come into conflict with a desire to be a pastor who shepherds my churches uh, out of the valley of the shadow of death, which I sometimes think that's where we are and into greener pastures as a representative of Christ. And I realize it's Christ alone that saves, uh, but even so within the context of leading two small rural churches, um, it, it was, it was uh, I eventually came down with, uh, they should at least have the conversation about disaffiliation. They had the conversation, they uh, took the vote to disaffiliate, and then this last Saturday, alongside Holston and Florida Annual Conferences, um, Oklahoma dismissed, uh, allowed to disaffiliate 55 churches, of which two were mine. And I let my DS know that um, whatever decision my churches made, I would follow them. And if the annual conference uh, allowed us to disaffiliate, then I would be disaffiliating as well. So it, it looks as though uh, I'm going to be a part of the Global Methodist Church. They're having an ordination convocation event um, here in Oklahoma on the 13th, I believe, Saturday the 13th, the day before Mother's Day. So I'm going to be doing that. And um, I'm doing that with a, a sad heart. I, I don't like stepping out of the United Methodist Church. Um, I'm doing it with a glad heart. Um, I've had to really compromise my conscience in the almost 12 years that I've been serving the United Methodist Church in a pastoral capacity. And I'm not going to have to do that as much uh, now in the global Methodist church. Um, I am convinced that there is no way to be part of the church and not have one's conscience compromised in one degree to one degree or another. But the degree to which the United Methodist Church required that of me was just unreasonable and uh, hard. That doesn't mean I've given up on the United Methodist Church um, and all cards on the table. I want to be a voice that's leading to reconciliation in the future. I... I I think too many people gave assets and trust and hope and prayers to the United Methodist Church to completely abandon it at this point. I don't glibly dismiss the United Methodist Church as just a hopelessly apostate church. I, I think as long as the articles of religion are in place, as long as Jesus' name is front and center, there are certain anchors in the United Methodist Church that simply cannot be undone. And I know you could say that about a bunch of other traditions that have gone liberal. Um, it, it's my sincere belief that liberalism is collapsing, and um, as it's taking over institutions, that this is not something that can be sustained, um, but it's something that needs to be um, persevered through. 
And I know that might sound silly as a person who is now checked out of the UMC. My hope is that this is just a temporary thing. Uh, what happened at jurisdictional conferences just a few months ago really signaled to me um, a, a takeover of the United Methodist Church by liberals in the United States. But I, I think that the denomination is bigger than the United States. For the time being, it's a hostile place to conservatives. For the time being, liberals are enjoying being on top. I think depending on what happens in the Philippines and Africa, that can change. And I realize a lot of people think that's a stupid thing to say and that the liberals have the high ground and this is already a foregone conclusion. I'm just not content with that. I'm not giving up on that. The reason that I'm content to leave right now is I'm telling myself it's temporary. And and two, um, I don't think there was room for my voice anymore within the United Methodist Church. I... Uh, I can't believe I got to this point and did not get fired. And um, I did come close once. And I I can't believe I made it to this point without getting fired. And of course, the deed hasn't been sent to the buildings yet. The stuff could still go wrong. But if 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 all goes the way that I'm, I've been praying that it would, then we're going to get the deed to our buildings and we're going to be free and I'm not going to have to fear reprisal or punishment from anyone anymore. And that's going to feel good. I, 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 I fear God. I should always fear God. Um, but to, to fear an institution that, to my mind, has been compromised and is hostile to... Um, I, would, I would consider my voice in the line of prophetic voices. I don't want, I'm not claiming to be a prophet, but... I, I heard I read an author one time say that um, prophets were conservative covenant lawyers. That's essentially what their role was in ancient Israel. There were liberalizing influences in their society, teaching them it's okay to worship other gods. It's okay not to be so literalistic with their interpretation of the scriptures. And the the prophets showed up regularly, reliably, faithfully to say. No, we don't get to revise the covenant, uh, the, the, the call to be holy in the way that God determines holiness has not been canceled. It never will be canceled. That's the kind of voice that I'm trying to occupy right now. Um, and I feel pretty good about what I've done so far. I, I've been talking for a while about when I get free, you know, things that are going to change. I don't think much is going to change. Um, I have tried to walk a line of being reasonable and rational, and not participating in the partisan punditry, name-calling. And uh, I know the concern for some people is maybe this guy doesn't even know what evil is. You know, he's not calling things evil as much as I would like, or uh, he's not referencing the Bible as much as I would like. And the intent there is not to water things down. The intent is to allow people to hear what I'm saying. I, I don't think that I've minced my words at all. I think I've been pretty clear about my convictions and, and what my agenda is. But once you start name-calling, once you start calling people evil, once you start quoting the Bible at people like they don't understand it, um, that's that's when people tune out. You know, uh, As I understand it, my audience is filled with people with good intentions. Um, they read the Bible differently. And um, uh, nobody identifies as, as evil. You know, if they do, uh, that's great. You, you should receive my message just fine because, you know, it's in line with Jesus and Paul who, uh, and the rest of the, the biblical authors who, uh, yes, sin is a problem and you're born in, uh, in, in wickedness and you must repent and be born again. Uh, that, that's all in line. Uh, but there are a lot of people listening to me who are not on board. And I want to be a bridge between left and right where the left knows I'm not one of them, but also knows that I'm not um, trying to increase tensions or demonize them or dehumanize them. Uh, that we're just at a place with uh, sincere, severe worldview differences. And, um, you know, it, it's to us right now to decide, are we going to continue to entrench and get nastier and nastier and more and more resentful? Or are we going to have a hard conversation? And I'm I'm in favor of having a hard conversation. And I I don't know. Maybe I'm not the guy to do it. Um, I would like to think I'm one of the guys 
to do it. I, I feel good about the connections that I'm drawing and the way that things make sense to me. I, I can navigate through things better, I think, than most. Um, part of my origin story is being a conservative and then being really frustrated with other conservatives who are habitually, persistently resentful. I've been a conservative for a while. I've known and liked a lot of conservatives, but one of the things that I've noticed is that a ton of conservatives are um, not good at disagreement, and they practice avoidance, they practice denial, and they practice resentment, and I think all of these things are spiritually toxic. I don't think we have any option but to engage with our detractors, with our enemies, and to do so in a way that is um, not necessarily dispassionate, but also not so anxious and heightened that we're setting ourselves up to fail. There are some conservatives that are idiots, just like there's some liberals that are idiots. But there are a lot of very intelligent people who, if they had their emotions under control, could do much better. And I think they just need to have a space where they can see that and do that better. And I would like to provide that space in the meantime. I, I don't know. I haven't heard from anybody yet saying that I just need to shut up. Uh, there have been a couple people who've taken issue with me and been nasty, but uh, that's been the exception. If if I continue to grow, if my channel continues to grow, I think there is going to be more pushback. And as I continue to have a critical voice of the United Methodist Church, there are going to be people who want to say, hey, you're not one of us anymore. You need to shut up. And I, I'm just going to go ahead and anticipate that and say, no, I'm not going to shut up. Um, I just don't think that's how things work. I, I think people talk about the things they care about, and people want to listen to people talking about things they care about. Even if I have uh, dissociated myself from the United Methodist Church on a temporary basis, for the time being, for certain reasons that I think are going to change, that doesn't mean that I am not part of the conversation. For better or for worse, the United Methodist Church is not the whole world, it's just part of the world. And the rest of the world is going to talk about you. And I'm going to be part of that world. I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be holding up what is said and done against the Bible and against Christ, uh, who he is as, as he has been revealed. And I'm going to, I, I know a thing or two about John Wesley and the people called Methodist about this heritage that we have. I, I'm not the biggest metho nerd, but I, I know enough to, to be able to assess things. And I know there are a lot of people within the United Methodist Church who are going to feel abandoned and isolated if they're not listening to people like me. So I'm going to continue talking. And hopefully what you're going to see if you continue watching is someone who's fair someone who uh, is faithful, and someone who's invested in a, a better future for people inside and outside of the United Methodist Church. I, I want a future where it means same th something to say you're a Christian, where it means something to say you're a Methodist. Um, I want to build with people. I, I want to build not just here in, in my little towns where I serve. I want to build a movement of people who call themselves Methodists know what that means and the world is different because of us. I, I don't think there's any reason why we can't see Methodist, a Methodist revival again like we saw before. I My heart has burned for the Methodist revival ever since I went to seminary and really learned about it and I it's still burning and so I don't I don't imagine my voice is the primary voice or the only voice, maybe maybe there is a day in the future where I'm going to assess the situation and say, oh, I need to be quiet now. Um, enough people, enough good voices are talking, and we're being led in a good direction. But uh, for the time being, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't be quiet anymore whenever I saw things falling apart. Um, one final thing that I would say, um, and I, I've written a couple things about it, but once we passed the 1,000 subscriber mark, we were able to monetize. And I always felt strange about that until we got to that point. I just think it's weird to be clicking on something Jesus religion oriented and then getting a, a commercial for soap or something. And um, But then I, I wasn't even monetized and I tried to watch one of my videos and there was already a commercial on there. So I was like, well, <laughs> I, I, I still don't know what that was, but I went ahead and monetized because um, 
We have a producer here, TJ. You've seen him on some of my videos. The church has been paying him for some time out of pocket. It would be great to recoup some of that cost for him. And it'd be great if we could continue growing this just to, to build a production machine uh, that's higher quality. We're able to do more and we're able to equip the people called Methodist for uh, sober communal living together, uh, if you will. I, I just think knowledge is power and faith seeks understanding and um, it's to everyone's benefit if uh, the plain spoken project can continue to flourish. So I don't know how big the market cap is on this. I know uh, there's millions of people who call themselves Methodist as it is right now. Uh, we've got, I, I think, 1,185 subscribers. I'd like to think that we could multiply that. United Methodist Videos has 19,000 subscribers last I checked. I think Seedbed has even more than that, even though that's not an official denominational resource. That's a um, Methodist thing. The The Reformed Christian movement, uh, uh, the, there are so many names, Vody Bauckham, um, uh, who, who are the big ones? John MacArthur, uh, Doug, uh, heck, Moscow, Idaho. There are a lot of Reformed preachers doing very well online, have huge followings. Reformed Christianity is very robust on YouTube. Uh, not the case with Methodism, Arminianism, Arminianism. I would like for that to change. I would like for a number of voices from the Methodist sphere to consistently provide uh, a picture of what it is that we believe. I don't want to be adversarial with, with Reformed Christianity. I very much appreciate what they have to offer. But what we have to offer is good, too, and it's faithful. And I want to be uh, doing that. I want you to support me, and I want us to find other voices we can support that are doing that well. There are a lot of good people writing. We have a lot of good academic stuff. Uh, to my knowledge, we don't have a lot of people doing quality uh, traditionalist, orthodox, conservative, Wesleyan theology in dialogue with the world that we're in today. So if you know of anybody, uh, connect me. I, I'd love to have more connections. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to say today. Um, I, I began with asking for prayer, and I'm going to end with asking for prayer. And I just, uh, I hope that the Methodist movement is not the dead sect that John Wesley feared it would become. I pray that we reclaim the doctrine and the discipline and the spirit with which we first set out. I know that there are a lot of people who, who want to act as though that's just anachronistic and that the past has no place in the present, and I think they're wrong. Um, and I would like for other people to think those voices are wrong too and uh, reclaim the heritage with me. I'm excited about what the future looks like. I'm not going to do any rah-rah cheering for the Global Methodist Church. I think they're going to deal with the same institutional pressures as the United Methodist Church. I think that uh, we're going to have all kinds of struggles and um, anxieties ahead. But I, I am rah-rah on board, on board uh, for the project, the covenant of Christ Jesus, uh, the, the new covenant. And uh, I'm rah-rah on board for the Methodist revival and the ways in which we can... Uh, uh, flee from the wrath to come, and spread scriptural holiness across the land. So um, may God bless such efforts, whether or not I'm at the helm of them, and may they bless this community insofar as we glorify him. The future is a scary place without Jesus. Um, I would just exhort you to, to be strong in the Lord, continue participating in your local church, continue to tune in to me if I'm a helpful voice in making sense of the world. And may God bless our efforts together. All right. Thanks, friends. See ya.